we were out at pregame, and those guys were throwing snowballs around. Now, as a coach, I'm sitting here, oh boy, this ain't good. This ain't good. But it was good in the long run because they were loose. They, they, they took advantage of the weather, and they, and they knew that, uh, you know, they had a, a good chance of winning that game. So uh, it was an exciting game. It was fun. It was really fun. We had a, a blast there. Uh, the kids really enjoyed it. I think the coaches enjoyed it, most of them. Some of them wore sneakers, and they learned a lesson. <laughs> I wore boots. Now, going into the game, we were... We knew that we had to run the ball because it was impossible to throw that ball. Even though we threw three touchdowns, every time the ball was in the air, nobody breathed. I would have liked to come out of that game with them having negative yards, but I'm not going to complain about 62 yards, okay? So the gold bars aren't that heavy. I'll, I'll carry it. And I will also tell you, listen, that ball was, it was like a greased pig. You couldn't hold on to that thing. Uh, and we were... We had a couple turnovers, we had a couple times, or they had some turnovers, so it was a hard ball to hold on to because of the weather. Zach Zoli three, threw three touchdown passes and tied the single season record of 27. So again, 27 touchdown passes, he tied it. We still got two games to go, so I'm assuming and I'm hoping that he breaks that record, okay? Breaks the record. He's tied it with 27. Beating all of Division Two. That's all 151 or 52 teams. 151 teams in Division II. We are leading the country in first downs per game at 25.6 and total first downs at 231. 231 first downs this year, and we're averaging 25.6 a game. So that's number one in the country. And, that, and again, that's a great stat. A lot of people don't look at that type of stat, but that's a great stat. That means we're moving the ball. We're moving the ball up and down the field. Now, getting in the end zone sometimes is a whole other story, but we're moving the ball. Our, our future is promising with some of these kids, and, and we just got to keep cultivating them. We got to make sure that they continue to get stronger. They start, they know more of the defense or offense, whatever they may be on. But our future looks bright, and we got a lot of young kids. Our, our key to us being successful in the future is we got to continue to do that every recruiting class. We got it. This recruiting class is probably the most important recruiting class we're going to have. We got to find the right kids to continue to build what we're building right now. I learned that it is better to have rain at your homecoming game instead of snow. Okay? I'm telling you, there was nobody there. At least at our homecoming in the rain, there was people there. It was scary. It was scary. You looked over, and I, and believe it or not, I counted them. There was like 50 people on their sidelines or on their stands. Uh, our stands, we had more people. Shippensburg had more people than the Millersville, and it was their homecoming, which is scary to me. Our band came. Our band was there. They didn't play an instrument, but they were there. Uh, they were supposed to be there for the parade, and uh, they can't. They didn't even go to the parade. Millersville had their homecoming parade. Mil uh, Shippensburg, the band didn't participate in it. They came to the game for the first half. And then they left, again, wanted to make sure they'd get home with road conditions, things like that. So, like I said, I, you know, Bill Morgan interviewed me after the game, and I, I really appreciate the band being there. That's great support. Uh, one, no matter what happens with our program, I know the band will be 100% behind us, and uh, we're 100% behind them. Shovels all day, going back and forth, back and forth. Now, this is in the beginning of the game. And, and it's snowing, but you can't tell very much here. But in the third quarter, it started coming down. And these guys, these guys were working their tails off. Every time they had a chance, they were running across the field with a shovel. One of the kids that plays baseball for them was from Miller's, or was from Chambersburg. And I forget what his last name was, but uh, I talked to him a while on our sidelines. I told him, I told him this. I said, you guys play Shippensburg. At Shippensburg, I'm going to come and watch your baseball game because you guys did such a good job today. We were able to blitz these guys, and it helped us out quite a bit with them not getting money. Plays like that, we were able to run to the ball and make things happen. So the kids were dialed in a little bit. And, and when you make a team one-dimensional, all right, where they can only run the ball, it helped you as a defense, that's for sure. Khalil Smith, number 96, right there making that play, had a great day. Great day. Again, with these throwing conditions, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, just there. He was just waiting on it, he caught the ball, ran for it. He got caught. Okay, another blitz right here. Uh, Khalil Smith again gets the sack here. Again, we have good coverage. 
just no, nowhere to go. We're able to dominate their front line a little bit. You see this right here? There's people outside, okay? And there's not many cars. There's one car up there with its lights on. Now, I'm going to show some pictures later in the game. That parking lot is full with everybody's lights on because that's where everybody went to watch the game. <laughs> Nobody wanted to stay in out in the cold. See the snow? Look at our faithful fans up there. Where are, you, where are the Frenettes sitting? Here? Right there? Right there? All huddled up under a blanket or something? Yeah. If I wasn't from Punxsutawney, I probably wouldn't like snow. I got you. Hey, you know, the, 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 the funny part was we have those two kids from California on the team. All right? Zach Kinney and, uh, and uh, the tight end, Alex Colgin. And uh, those two guys were, they didn't know what to do. Their eyes were this big. It was like they, they saw Santa Claus for the first time. You know? It was crazy. It was crazy. They're like, what do we do? Just dress warm. You'll be all right. You definitely got to tip your hat to the, the offensive line. No question. Uh, did a wonderful job dominating the game. Uh, our guys really were excited about the game. Going into the game, we knew we had to run it. And then even on the bus trip up there, I'm thinking to myself, you know, hey, we can still throw it. We'll be all right. We can still throw. We know where we're going to go. The receiver has the advantage because he knows where he's going to cut. We can still, you know, we're going to take it by surprise because they're going to think we're going to have to run the ball. And we're still going to have a lot of success throwing that thing through the air. But after watching our guys pregame, that wasn't the case. We, we definitely had to run the ball. I'll tell you what, this was one of those, no, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, Hold on, Coach Rizzi. Can I talk just for a second? He comes from Edinburgh. Where it snows nine months a year. I come from Euclid, Ohio, where we don't know. Edinburgh for all those years, he doesn't have any boots. I know. Coaches before wear the game, I'm That's concerned right. about him. I say, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll get you some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> who had to buy? Who had to get you gloves? I had to borrow gloves. Yeah, because yeah. all mine are plus and orange. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Herrod, you know, a very versatile fullback that can run a flat route. Turn up the sideline, wheel, catch. Love that kid. He's great. He's great to have. I'll tell you, the key block here, look at the center going backside, just cutting him. See that tackle right there, the nose guard? See him fall, watch him fall. Bow. I'm going to tell you, those numbers are deceiving. Uh, I, it, it's a scary game. It's a scary game, and they're a very good team. They beat Pace 56-14. Lost IUP 28-13, and IUP is 5-3 right now. Lost to California, 22-19. 22-19 to California has 36 full scholarships. They're at their max, and they lost to them by three points. Okay, so this is a good football team. Their quarterback is very good. Let's take a look at this quarterback, Wagner. 315.4 yards per game passing. Number one in the, in the conference, fourth in Division II. And that's with him only playing... A little bit of Millersville and getting playing only two minutes in Cheney. That's he led the whole country in yards up until two weeks ago. Or two weeks ago he did lead the country in yards. 330.2 yards of total offense. First in the conference, third in the country, the quarterback. 16 yards per completion. That is unheard of. 16 yards. Every time they throw the ball, it's 16 yards. Think about it. Number one in the in the in the uh, conference, and of course number one in the conf or in the uh, Division Two football in the country. Twenty eight hundred yards passing so far this season, and the last two games he hasn't thrown for anything really. Eighteen touchdown passes. The average for the eighteen touchdown passes is thirty seven point five yards. So what's that telling you? Their scoring opportunities come off of big plays. Big plays. Whenever their 18 touchdown passes of the year is 37.5. That's the average. Okay? That means there's big plays. Their coach, Denny Dowds, will coach his 396th game on Saturday. I'm coaching my 10th. <laughs> I got a chance, right? I got a chance. So... Uh, there's something I'm going to tell you, many of you might not realize, okay? Six wins, what's that mean? That's a winning season. That's a winning season. And again, to us to get our goal, which is 7-4, and four, our goal right now is 7-4, because that's the best we can do this year, 7-4. So that's our goal. 
we've got to go through East, East Stroudsburg to get to six. Now, since 2004, since 2004, how many times has Shippensburg had a winning season? Anybody know? One. One time. One time, 2009. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. That six is a magical number for our program. A magical number. Because it points us in the right direction. It tells us that we're doing the right things. We're building a foundation right now. And we're going to continue to get better as the years go on. But it's an important number. This game is important. This is like the Super Bowl to us. And I told our kids all week about this. This is big time. And I know we're not fighting for a conference championship. And I know we're not fighting for a national championship. We're fighting for six. Six wins is what we're fighting for. And that's a heck of an accomplishment. Heck of an accomplishment. And then once we get six, we'll worry about seven. But six is important right now. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. But we need to establish a winning program, a consistent winner. And that's what we talk about all the time. Our players and our coaches consistently win. We've got one more Thursday to go. All right. One more Thursday to go. And this has been great. I really, this has been fun this whole year. And uh, I really appreciate it. You guys coming out here to watch us and, and listen to us, and I hope you've learned some football uh, throughout the year here. But uh, again, I, come out on Saturday, support us as much as you can. Anything else? Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys coming.